John Kearns. I'm the CEO of a local business just down the road in Tallinn called Partus. Um, and uh, maybe that's why I was asked. Uh, or maybe it's because uh, I have what I think are a few observations that I think are interesting. Uh, the, some of you may know that the, the Chinese have a saying, may you live in interesting times. I think we're living in really, really interesting times. There's a lot going on. And it's not being engineered, it's happening in some sort of a way. Something is happening, there's a silent revolution happening, politically, socially, commercially. I, I want to draw some uh, of your attention to what I think are some trends that might indicate uh, the potential uh, for developing a real local economy strand that really hasn't existed so strongly for the last 50 years. We've become globalized, we've become uh, scaled up, and maybe uh, I can make you think a little about scaling down, and maybe local is going to be the new global. Uh, but first of all, who are we, Harris? I'll just very briefly tell you that we're a social enterprise, we've been around for 30 years, started as Gentala working. And our purpose really is to tackle unemployment, uh, largely using enterprise innovation uh, to develop a, a good community, a good, you know, people who are living well, living holistically, uh, providing for their families, financially independent, and anything that's stopping them from doing that, we're there to help them. And generally, over the last 30 years, that has meant that in periods of unemployment, we help them start their own business. Um, each year, we would work with uh, over a thousand enterprise clients, and they would start 200 businesses every year, small, one-man uh, businesses. Uh, and we've been tracking that. The, the survival rate after two years is 90%. So, you know, it, 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 it has a, a strong financial and economic impact. Uh, we also manage four enterprise centres around the Tala area, uh, and that's uh, one of the ways in which we uh, earn our own income as a social enterprise. So, I want to identify three trends, that's not easy for an Irish person to say, three trends that I think uh, are, are happening. And the first is a social enterprise. I come from a commercial background. So when I came into the world of the non-profits, it was weird in a way. Uh, I, I, I really wasn't aware that there was this third sector out there. Um, and wasn't really aware of what they did. It, 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 it wasn't relevant to business and to what was happening uh, in the real world as, as I saw it. But over the last 10, 15 years, there have been a lot of developments in the world of the third sector, the non-profits, the social economy, the social enterprise, social entrepreneurs. And there's been a lot happening in the other end of the scale there, in the traditional for-profit area. So basically the non-profits have become much more commercial-minded, much more business-minded. They're aware of their own sustainability issues and the way that they need to develop an earned income strategy so that they can have income to continue doing the good work that they do. Likewise, commercial for-profit companies have been realizing that they can't just be in it for profit. There has to be give back to the community, they have an impact in the community in which they work, uh, and that it, it's, it's not only good for their bottom line, which, which, which it is, but it's good for their employees, uh, and it's good for the community from which they draw their resources. So that's a dynamic that has been growing. We're, we're going to see more and more of that as an element of the way we do business in Ireland in coming years, where we're, in some respects, underdeveloped in that area compared to, say, the US and the UK. Uh, and then in other respects, we're well developed because we have things like, we think that we don't traditionally think of as social enterprises, like the credit union movement, like the GAA. So when we do it well, we do it extremely well. Um, and I think you're going to see the, 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 the lower end of that market developing much more strongly and becoming aware of the opportunities that exist for them and the resort utilization that's possible for them. The second trend is this trend called localism. This movement to produce and consume locally. And there are a number of effects that localism is having. It's, a, it's at an early stage yet. We, we're seeing the kind of the early uh, uh, outliers having success in, in, in producing a new kind of local economy. The effects of localism is to 
to strengthen community. We've seen communities that are like ghost towns during the day. Everybody commutes into the city, leaves the community, there's nothing happens in the community. You go, you collect the kids from childcare, and you come back into the community, you lock your door, and that's it. Through localism, we're starting to see that the provision of services and, and, and commodities locally, people getting out and mixing, buying locally. Um, we're also seeing the reduction in what's called food miles. People are becoming much more aware that they don't necessarily want to um, buy a product that has travelled 2,000 miles. They would rather have something that's local and be produced locally. I think a very key factor in localism is a sense of place what the French would call terroir, the provenance of the food. And I've seen some things uh, today and at other fairs recently, you know, a taste of a place. I think it's a taste of Galway is over there. I've seen before a taste of Ackle. So why not a taste of Tala? What does Tala taste like? I don't know. But we're going to start finding out. So uh, provenance, being able to link uh, into the, the community and the sense of place and creating a sense of pride um, and that whole thing about connecting and interacting locally, creating networks of people who pass each other on the street, say hello, push the pram, talk to the, 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 the grocer or the, the fruit merchant or the fish merchant. All of that that was commonplace 50 years ago, I think we, we can see opportunities for that to come back. Also in, in, in uh, localism is the identification of local resources that are underused. Uh, I'll come to it later when I show you what it is we're doing on the ground, or we're starting to do on the ground here in Tala. But there are resources around us, under our noses, that are not being utilised. They've been put there, they've been used a little bit, but there's a huge amount of opportunities under our nose. Sustainability is an important issue as well, uh, and a, a, a local productive community that produces and consumes locally is a very sustainable community. Local jobs are important. I can tell you that from Tala, we have enormous jobs, uh, high-level jobs, all around in City West, just uh, out here, uh, Grange Castle, high biopharma jobs and everything. There aren't jobs, so for a lot of our clients who are living locally in some of the housing estates in Tala, through localism we can provide jobs for them, uh, where it is in their community and jobs for them. Um, and then there is this, uh, I, I'm calling it the hipster movement, there is this, altern this desire for an alternative to the globalised capitalist economy. So people are prepared to support and pay more for supporting local economy. The third trend is uh, the arts and the craft food, which won't be new to anybody here, of course. Um, but, but it's just seeing how that fits in with the other two. It's always micro-enterprise at a local level. Uh, although, strangely enough, and I was in London last week at the Speciality Foods Fair, um, I, I find it strange the dynamic there is from agencies to push us to export and scale up. I think we should question that. I, I'm all for exports, I'm all for big business, and, and it's all fantastic, and there's plenty of scope and place for that. But so too is there space for local business that has no ambition other than to be local and serve a local community. And that shouldn't be in any way disparaged. Um, the provision of the, or the, the, the availability of skilled craftspeople in our community, not having to go and work somewhere else but retaining them within our community. There is a quality drive for this. It's not just about in the old days of buy local or shop local. This is a new dynamic. This is quality driven. They will not just buy the ordinary old fashioned curled up ham and cheese sandwich. So we've got to identify who are those customers and what is it that they're looking for in, in their locality. It's usually small quantities, and there's nothing wrong at all with small quantities if it's, if it's a sustainable business. It's not mechanized, traditional methods, bringing back traditional me methods. Um, and then the fact of being local and seasonal. Uh, it seems really old fashioned, but it's come right back. The, uh, the, that move towards eating local food and eating seasonal food. And then it's only one, uh, one bullet point there, but it's a huge bullet point. The tourism potential of this, and I heard, I think, this morning, uh, they were talking about uh, food tourism and the potential of food tourism. We're only beginning to, to, to understand that. And why, if we wanted to attract people to Tala or anywhere else, what could we offer in terms of what is uh, a food offering? 
so they're the three trends that I think are providing opportunities. So how are we dealing with that locally? I'm sorry, before I go on, just to say that yesterday in San Francisco, uh, there was a big conference called Neighborhood Economics. So the Americans will always put a, a jazzier spin on this. But I love the idea, Neighborhood Economics. And they've identified four key words. Place, and I mentioned that, a sense of place, where we're from, the relationship, relationships between consumers and producers, relationships within communities. Money, it isn't being driven by money anymore. It's not being driven by the desire for profit. People are more interested in how, um, in, in, in the value and the worth of what they're doing. And then meaning, giving meaning to your life. I mean, many people are not happy that their career should be based around 40 years of working for a big international conglomerate. Some of the phrases that I took from what they were talking about, they're saying, we're going to take back the economy from Wall Street to Main Street. Calling, bringing together practitioners, entrepreneurs, activists, and community investors, creating wealth for all neighborhoods. Wealth in, within a neighborhood is something we've stopped expecting. When we think at a national level or an EU level, we should be thinking as well about the potential to create wealth in the community, uh, reviving local food systems and healing the planet. Uh, and then this final comment, the future of our food system lies in local and regional orientation, the platform for everything from growing jobs to increase civic participation, business decisions made by local people with the community in mind. I think there's a huge potential for us there, and I believe it's something we'll see grow. So what are we doing in, 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 in my organization, Partis, and we're doing locally? We've developed what we call the Social and Local Enterprise Alliance. And it's a it's collaboration between ourselves and the LEO and the local council, the chamber, the local development company, the Area Partnership, the, the Indian Institute of Technology, and the Dublin Food Chain. We're, we're developing immediately three businesses which are ready to launch uh, imminently. Uh, the aim is to develop about the 8, 10, 12 businesses over the coming uh, year, year and a half. The first one is called Kitchen Time. It's, it's not a completely new idea. The, the community kitchen where somebody can go in and, uh, and hire a kitchen for a few hours to test their product or to use it on a small scale. Well, what we've done that is very different Anywhere I know who's done this in the start of the US, anyone who's done it has spent basically a quarter of a million building a, a kitchen and then running it. We've identified seven kitchens in Tala that are used for two to three hours a day. That's a lot of unused space. Imagine if Michael O'Leary had seven Boeing 737s that were only flown once a day to, to London. And that's what's sitting in our community. We're bringing that together and in a very clever way, working hand in hand with the HSE to provide a seamless service for any artisan food producer who wants to come to us. They get the mentoring, they get the direction, they, they'll be helped through their journey. And they'll get it at a much cheaper. We, we, can, we can manage to do this with them at 15 euro an hour, which is, is way below, below anything else available. We're also developing the County Fair. The County Fair is an artisan food and drink hub in Tala because we know from our own work that maybe 30% of all the small micro entrepreneurs we're helping every year are now coming from the food sector. But they're, they're springing up in, in, in an uncoordinated way. We want to give them a shot give them a, a showcase where they can show off what it is they do and we can find them all in one place and they can sell from there if they wish and also it will give us a, a location where we can show off as well top class food and drink and of course it be, it, 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 amazing that in a place with 100,000 people uh, Tala, we don't have a craft brewery yet Practically every village in Ireland seems to be having a craft brewery, but we don't. We will have very, very shortly because we've developed the Priory Brewing Company. We were lucky to discover that the Archbishop of Dublin brewed beer 250 years ago in the Priory in Tala. Uh, so we're going to bring it back. So that's the uh, social local enterprise alliance, potential for localism. Have I the time to show a minute and a half video? Okay. So I've put that into a little format. Which Right. The largest town in Ireland. And yes, we all know it's not perfect, but we're getting there. I'm tired of going against 
Kolkata is always forced to respond with great people, great ideas, and lots of hard work. So that's why we are meant to, to the social and local enterprise alliance, a new approach to developing local small businesses, providing extra jobs locally, and reinvesting those profits into other new businesses. And local doesn't mean lesser than global, no. As locals, we know where there are opportunities and gaps that we can turn to our benefit. We've always been resourceful in that way. We know what resources are being underused in our community or what ideas are not being tried here yet. Don't underestimate us or the power of people to be really smart for their own benefit. This new determination of ours will be exciting for local workers and consumers alike. And once we get the ball rolling, who knows where the dynamic can take us. Our vision is of a talent rich in craft, artism and local enterprise that's for everyone. In you and unstoppable spirit, lifting talent as an example of a new type of economy that is both local and social at the same time. Tala as a place named that evokes pride in its development identity. The Social and Local Enterprise Alliance is a strong team that is committed to making this dream a reality. 100,000 people in Ireland's largest town can't be wrong. It's true what they say, there's strength in numbers. So hopefully that might have given you a little bit of thought. Uh, question if there was anybody who wanted to ask a question. Okay, thanks very much.